Welcome back everybody. Luke Roy here with Snowfalls Farm and uh, we're just out this morning. It's uh, <clears throat> New Year's Eve so we're getting ready to load up the boiler for the day and uh, carry us through the new year probably. Temperatures outside around 37 degrees. Um, the river opened back up a bit yesterday <clears throat> or overnight. We did have quite a big ice jam. We'll have to take a quick tour down there. Uh, I've taken this whole pile of wood now and stacked it up in the uh, in the woodshed. So we have quite a lot of wood stored up, ready to go uh, for the next probably month in the easy to grab area. And then in the back of the woodshed, we still got uh, quite a lot left too. It's a little bit harder to get at, um, but still beets trying to pull it off the pile especially in the rain and the cold and all that stuff. <clears throat> Behind me over here, this closer pile is uh, next year's wood or emergency wood for this year. And then uh, behind that, we have another pile with the pallet in front of it over there. Um, and that one's uh, for this winter as well. So I'll have a big, you know, transfer of that with the pickup truck probably backing up to the woodshed, unloading it and uh, getting it in there. So that way we have plenty to use for the you know rest of the winter and it's in the nice dry easy to get to storage so checking the uh, levels here it looks like we're gonna need a little more glycol and a water mixture for a water jacket make sure that doesn't you know run out uh, we're at 183 right now I'm expecting there's a big uh, bed of coals in there to uh, get this fire going and then we have I've pretty much stacked myself right in uh, this is I love having the wood in this section here uh, it's really easy to grab and put in the boiler and uh, I closed my doorway off uh, into the rest of the woodshed which is probably a bad idea uh, but I'll burn my way back through that and then I even piled some of it up uh, on the ground because I ran out of space and then I even had a little extra so I got my uh, toboggan on top of a pile right next to the uh, right next to the door so hoping to keep that dry my plan is to burn the stuff on the ground because that just makes me nervous having it so close to the, uh, the boiler um, and then I can burn this stuff here we're gonna get snow here soon so I'd like to get that uh, stuff burnt up and then, then I'll have access to the rest of the wood boiler. Ah, sorry, the rest of the woodshed. Got the snowmobile in here right now, but we got three rows of 24-inch uh, stick uh, lined up over there. And once I op reopen my doorway there, I'll be able to get in there and uh, grab that and pull it through and burn it. That should be at least a month of wood stack there. So, I mean, we're getting, this is, we had October, October uh, 12th, we fired it up. So we're looking at most mm, half of October, then November and December. So we're, you know, almost two and a half, um, you know, months in to the heating season. And I think we've done probably a quarter and a half. Uh, so, but I think we might burn a lot more than that when we have sustained low temperatures. There's a couple days I had to come out and load it up, uh, you know, twice during the day. So three times total, you know, morning when I got home from work and then later in the day. So... Uh, that was when it was like below 10 degrees. So, all right, let's get ourselves situated here so we can load up. Okay. Right, good thing we showed up when we did. We're pretty much out of wood in there see the uh, gasification vents are pulling down 
with the uh, bottom draft, you know. So it looks like we got two open in the front, one in the back. So that's pretty good for this thing. Um, it definitely would have gone a couple more hours if we really needed it to. But we'll get it raked out. So one of the first tips is uh, you want to have a nice long hand of tools to rake around in there. Um, I built this out of metal I found around here, but it works really good for kind of mixing it up, pulling the new coals down, and uh, <coughs> getting the ashes cleared away. Speaking of ashes, maybe we should take a couple scoops of that. I'm noticing a lot of fine ash material around the outside edge. We could scoop out of there. Definitely in the back. So. Where's my ash bucket over there? Again, you want to have a nice long handle. This shovel is retired. Uh, it's split. The end of it's split right in half. So. But it's a nice long handle shovel. Look at the ash pan. Nice galvanized bucket. It. Oh, there's two buckets in there. This is the uh, inside fireplace bucket. Either I clean this out now, or it falls down. Gas chamber. This is a big deal. I just want this to run as efficiently as possible. Clear up some space for it. Also helps helps keep the uh, gas vents from plugging up. Some of that's good for coals, actually. That's probably good. Can we get anything from this side? Got a brick in the back, this back corner over here. That's uh, broken because I think we're getting some flue gases skirting through. I'm finding a shortcut. So you know what? That's pretty hot. We'll put that over here on the wait for all the leaves. Might also clean out the uh, the bottom there. So this is cut up pretty small for this thing. Uh, that might be a better inside piece, but we'll put that in there. This is the kind of stuff it likes to eat right here. Cut in half. 24 inch stick. It's so nice having the wood right next to the boiler. 
that's a nice chunk of piece. I like to put the bigger pieces in the middle. And uh, so we're just about loaded. Got a lot of smoke coming out. Yeah, we're just about there. Oh, those are teeny tiny pieces. There, that is very full. All right, close that up. We'll take a peek at the uh, gasification chamber down here, see how it's doing. Oh man, that is full. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get my tool in there very well though. Yeah, I kind of built myself into a corner here. I don't think I'll be able to get the, uh, the tool inside the boiler, being that it's this long and I packed. All right, let's just give it a shot. Uh, yeah, okay. I think I got it. Oh wow, it is very full. Let's see if we can break that leading edge off first. What'd you find? See any squirrels out there? Look at that fine ash though. Most of it's... Wow, what was that? What was that, Roxy? Something on the ice? I have to investigate. That was loud. All right, what are we done? Oh, we're good. Just scrape off the bleeding edge here. So this boiler came with this tool, but it traveled around a little bit between owners. Nobody actually ever installed it until I got it. But somewhere along the way, it lost its tool for uh, clean out, so I made that one. Now this whole time, the boiler actually has been on, but it hasn't needed to fire up. This fell off too. It's starting to wear the edges out. I just kind of get it in there and then I'll close the door behind it. Got this weird stalactite down here. <laughs> That's uh, dripping out run down the front of the machine. This is usually moisture from the, uh, you know, the, the box itself burning. The moisture, the latent moisture out of the wood, it will seep and drip off the uh, door. And sometimes there's condensation too, because the door doesn't have a water jacket, so the door has a lot of cold heat cycles. So, but yeah, that's some weird ice. We'll throw that in the river. Yeah, just throw it over there. Alright, let's check out what the noise was.
Oh, what was that noise? Oh, don't eat that. Ew. All right. Yeah, we had a big old ice jam out here yesterday. It was like mm, 17 degrees yesterday. It's 37 degrees right now. Don't walk on that ice, Moxie. An apple? That's weird. Where did that come from? Did you bring that down here? Must have come off the compost pile. Yeah, that ice jam cleared itself right out of here. It was right here. Ice is backed up. I might have a picture of that actually. I'll add it to the video so you can see. Must have been enough current to push it out. So luckily we had another flood. I didn't lose any of this pile. I didn't lose that tree. It did move quite a long ways. This tree blew down. Pretty punky. It'll burn though. Uh, I don't know where this piece floated in from, but uh, it's here now. Oh yeah, ice is gone, Moxie. Ice is gone. Smelling some mice or something? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that. Don't walk on that, Mox. It's not very deep. It's like up to my knees, but it does look cold. Big old pile of mess over there. We call that Cody Island. It's actually nice and sandy when the water is down. The whole bottom of the river is sandy here. Hey, you goof. Hey, Maki. Moxie. You drinking? What do you smell over here? The snow Falls is right over there. About where you see that, that white patch right there. It takes a sharp turn and then you don't want to go that way with a canoe. All right, Maxie, let's go. We gotta get some breakfast going. So, I'm thinking that probably that was just the noise of the ice breaking up. What do you think, Moxie? That's what I'm thinking. That or a branch fell on it. It sounded for a second like an animal got on there. We've had a deer out on the ice before. Definitely not enough ice for that right now, though. I love this trail along the river. It's a good walking trail. You can go the whole length of the property. It's one of the few places along the river you can actually do this. If you go up and down the river, there's a lot of swamps and stuff. All right, dude. Yeah, you want to take a rope swing, Moxie? Ay, caramba. No, we do not. No, we do not want that. Oh, chicken laying an egg. All right, let's go cook some food. Come on, bud. Thanks for joining me today. Hopefully you found the video helpful if you got a wood boiler and you're wondering what to do and how it works day to day. Uh, one pro tip is to <laughs> find an old hat and jacket and gloves that you don't care about because you're gonna smell bad. It's one of the joys of having a wood boiler. All right, we'll see you guys again soon.